Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and I'm going to be bringing you the ultimate bubble blowing baby build. So this one is obvious, it's going to be a doot doot uh, bubble build. Uh, you've probably seen some versions of this before, but we're doing a level 200 version and I'll be demonstrating it on New Game Plus 2, so keep that in mind. The enemies are buffed and so damage will be higher on, uh, if you copy this build exactly, the damage will be higher that you'll deal on either the base game or even New Game Plus 1. Uh, just with all that in mind, let's dive on in and start off with the recommended attribute point points for this one. So you can see at level 200 here we've got 45 points into Vigor, 20 into Mind, 20 into s uh, Endurance, 50 into Strength, 50 into Dexterity, 10 into Intelligence, 74 into Faith, and 10 into Arcane. And obviously the Intelligence and Arcane are just at the base level they can be because this is a wretch build. Now obviously as far as Vigor is concerned we just want to have as much as possible because that gives us more hit points. Obvious stuff there. Mind we have at 20 because obviously we do drain a bit of FP using this one but I find that 20 is about what we need uh, in most circumstances so I don't put too many into there but just enough. Uh, endurance we have a 20 just because I wanted the flexibility to be able to wear specific armor and to uh, uh, comfortably have enough stamina with this one because again we're going to use a decent chunk of stamina with this build. Strength and dexterity I put at 50 each because ironically even though it's not the point of this build the weapon we're using is actually a pretty good one as far as bonking people with and it scales with strength and dexterity so it makes it pretty solid there. Uh, we didn't need anything for intelligence so I left that at 10. Faith we put to 74 because it's all the extra points I had for faith. Well, I shouldn't say extra, but uh, balancing it the way that I wanted in this build, it's as high as we could put it, and that makes it high enough to be very, very effective. And then arcane, I did 10 again because we don't need to put any points into arcane. Then for our equipment loadout, it's uh, a pretty straightforward build. Uh, we've got the Envoy's Longhorn as our main weapon. Attributes required to use that one are strength of 23, dexterity of 11, and faith of 18. So at a bare minimum, you need those stats to make this build. Uh, like I said, pretty solid attack power, honestly. You can see 294 plus 213 for our scaling there. Uh, not not bad at all. Obviously, if you're going to do it, I did it in sort of a, uh, a balanced quality way with the points, but if you were going to prioritize specifically for it, then it scales the best with strength for that. Well, I mean, also faith because of the holy damage, but for our physical scaling, strength is better than dex, so it makes sense to do that. I just like the higher dex because that's the playstyle I go with. Makes it easier for me because I have less build-up time for a lot of stuff. But anyway, uh, it's mostly not about that. It's mostly about the bubble shower, which is the weapon art that comes with the Envoy's Longhorn, which just blasts out a bunch of bubbles that stagger the enemy a lot and do a crazy amount of holy damage and a bunch of physical damage too, making them very, very powerful against just a ton of bosses. A lot of people will use this uh, this weapon to stagger their enemy and then they'll do critical hits with like a Misericord dagger or something like that or uh, the regular rapier and they'll just do a really powerful attack. I just like to keep hitting them with the bubbles. Uh, I usually just like to melt the en uh, whatever enemy I'm going against with the bubbles. Now obviously there's a few enemies that aren't susceptible to faith damage or holy damage I should say and so it's not a perfect build but it works against the vast majority majority of enemies in the game. Uh, then we're going to need a seal and we're going to need uh, just now for the base requirement on this one uh, you could use any seal you want. The finger seal would be perfectly fine because it's really only a necessity to have it because we're going to be casting golden vow and uh, that's just a, a boost incantation so the sorcery or the incantation scaling does not matter. That being said I like to use the air tree seal because A we can because we've got so many points into faith and B if you want to add some extra stuff to this like the lightning spear or something like that just to make it a more versatile build you can because with a build like this I don't like bogging it down with a bunch of extra weapons and stuff so we have the envoy's longhorn which already makes a pretty good weapon. If you pair a couple offensive incantations with this build as well it just makes it infinitely more versatile. So like I said I would just pair a couple lightning incantations with it probably lightning spear and maybe one of the big red lightning ones whatever you want just so you've got more options since we're putting so many points into faith anyway uh then for our armor for this one it's going to be mostly up to you the only important thing is the envoy crown and the reason for that is because it raises the potency of bubble based skills and since that's kind of the cornerstone of this build being our bubble attack it makes sense to want something that's going to give us a boost to that so uh like i said the crown you have to do the, or the uh, helmet you have to do the envoy crown for this build to be as effective as possible but for the rest of it it doesn't really matter so I went with the Night Maiden Armor, the Astrologer Gloves, and the Noble's Trousers. And obviously I just did this because I was sticking with a the theme. I like the uh, the Suleiman Onion Head style uh, head covering, which I really, really like. And that pairs really well with the Nox Armor, or the Night Maiden Armor, I should say. And then the other white stuff. So the Noble's Trousers are very white, except for the brown accent, which matches the uh, chest armor. And then the Astrologer's Gloves are really nice because they're just clean and white. Mostly uh, Elden Bling or Fashion Souls or whatever you want to call it for the decisions I made here, uh, except 
except for the Envoy Crown, that is important. For our Talismans, you'll probably also see a decent amount of variation just based on personal playstyle and preferences, but the way that I like doing it is the first one I use is the Carrion Filigreed Crest because it's going to lower the FP consumed by skills. This is nice just because we're using a weapon skill as the main thing for this build, so this will take it, make it take less FP, so the limited points that we had to put into mind uh, will go further with this Talisman, so that's why I like this one. Uh, Shard of Alexander is going to greatly boost the attack power of skills. Again, we're using weapon skill as the main point of this build, so having a talisman that's going to increase the attack power is a no-brainer. Uh, Sacred Scorpion Charm, same thing, raises holy attack. We do a lot of holy attack with this build, so it makes perfect sense to put the Sacred Scorpion Charm with. And Ritual Sword Talisman, which is going to raise our attack power when your HP is at maximum. Another one that makes perfect sense for this one, because this is going to be, we are just going to go in and immediately doot them with the bubbles, so it makes perfect sense to use this, because our HP should be at maximum, at least for that initial barrage, and hopefully for all the other ones that we spam immediately afterwards. Then we're going to have our Physic mixed up to support this build, so we use the Holy Shrouding Crack Tier, which is going to boost our Holy Attacks, another boost to our, our main attack for this one, and the Spiked Crack Tier, which will boost Charged Attack Power, which also works with the uh, skill that we'll be using. So both of these are just going to give us better damage. And then, obviously, your Ash Summon is going to depend on your playstyle. A lot of people like the Mimic Tier. For this build, I don't like the Mimic Tier. I prefer something that is going to aggro your enemy, and obviously, if you have the Dung Eater Puppet, it's going to be probably the best bet, because there's a lot of advantages to it, and it will aggro your enemy really well, keep them busy. Otherwise, uh, the Radon Soldiers uh, Ash is also another one that I like using because it's they're very aggressive and they have uh, flame weapons, so they deal flame damage, and so they're pretty useful. But any Ash that's going to aggro your enemy is going to work perfect because... The only thing is you don't want the enemy to be focused solely on you. That Now, most times I don't use my Ash Summon when I'm in combat, but every once in a while you come up against a boss that it's very, very useful to have one to aggro your enemy so you can just blast him with the bubbles. You don't have to use an Ash Summon, but if you do, make sure it's one that's very aggressive. And then, like I said before, we're just going to have the Golden Vow. That's really the only incantation you absolutely need for this build, and uh, that's just going to give us our attack and defense boost. Pretty simple and straightforward build. I think it also looks pretty dang cool, and it's pretty fun to play with, so let's test it out against some bosses. And so with something like this, you're just going to keep spamming them because uh, with enemies like this, you don't want them getting too close because then they'll take you out. Uh, now, the bigger the enemy is, uh, and slower I should say, the easier this is going to be to use. Because with these faster moving ones, you'll probably notice that you miss with a lot of your bubbles. Because A, they're small, and B, uh, <laughs> like I said, they just move really quickly so a lot of them miss them. But it still works pretty dang well. The only thing you have to be aware of with ones like this, because you're missing more often, uh, you're going to have to make sure you don't run out of your FP. So, pretty solid build, pretty easy to use. Uh, you can see I'm not doing the best at, uh, job at avoiding them, but still, without really breaking a sweat, take out one of... I mean, the Crucible Knights aren't the hardest bosses in the game, but they can be challenging. Like I said, honestly, in my opinion, pretty dang solid, uh, even in stuff like this. Even there, where we uh, were aimed at the wrong thing when we dooted it out, we still were able to hit him so much that he took a significant amount of damage. And obviously it showed a side advantage of this uh, of this build. We took out a bunch of his buddies that were all hanging around with him. Here we go, we got an enemy. A larger one that'll actually be hit by most of the bubbles. <laughs> It's always a bit anticlimactic with this build because they just kind of pop. <laughs> but it still does so much damage and, and on most enemy types staggers them so much that it's just, it's a lot of fun to use and it's incredibly powerful. Like I said, I mostly, when I use it, what I will normally do is just, I'll just keep spamming it. I won't wait until they hit to try and see how much more I need to do, I'll just keep doing it. Especially on larger bosses, because it'll, it'll just take them away so easily. So I could keep I could keep showing it against bosses, or even uh, use it against some more endgame bosses, but you've probably seen people use it before. It's pretty dang powerful, it's pretty effective. It's obviously not the best build in the game, or super unstoppable, or overpowered, or one-hit kills, or whatever else you want to call it. But it's just really easy to use. It, it's got very few... The skill the skill level is very low, I should say, to use this one. Because it's just one attack. You, you, you can boost it. You, like I said, you can pop your Physic. You can cast Golden Vow and everything. But you're just going to keep using the weapon art for it. It spreads out. Uh, the bigger the enemy and the more bubbles hit him, obviously the more effective it's going to be. But it works against smaller enemies, as I showed against the Crucible Knights. It's just a really effective uh, <laughs> attack that requires very little planning and forethought. That's my bubble-blowing 
playing Baby Build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, want to try this out, let me know how it goes. But that's all for today, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.